Hi, Gloria Lightbacker here with Healing You. It has been a really full week for me, and yet at the same time, the week has just begun. So I took some time to reflect on what is it that is causing me to have the experience that is so full. Well, what I've come to decide is it's because there's been so many moments of holding place, sacred space for tender hearts. And when that's the kind of space I'm holding, it's important for me to be able to call a pause and take time to be with what is in order to process all of the transformational changes that happen for many others and for myself. One of the things that's really touched me this week, or a couple of them, is when I'm working with someone who their whole life experience has felt like a big struggle to ever feel like they belong or fit in. In fact, they're pretty convinced that they don't. That's their life experience. And, and then also compounded by an uncomprehension or an inability to know how to actually engage with other people. It just feels really awkward because they were never really supported to develop those skill sets when they were little. This can be caused by neglect and neglect can show up in many, many different ways. Emotional neglect can be very debilitating and so painful and it's it's like it's almost invisible in our society for there to even be acknowledgement that such neglect exists. Unfortunately, it does. And I'm here to um, hold that space that no one needs to stay stuck there. I know it's super painful or at the time it can just feel like you're, you're numbed or you're invisible and nobody can see you. And when you begin to heal, it can be shocking to find out you mean people can see me? I thought I was invisible. And so these are really young parts and they need to be held with exquisite gentleness and precision with the empathy guesses for their whole sense of self to begin to form because it's kind of like that got passed over and now there's a new opportunity that resonant warmth provides in relationship with a trusted other. And sometimes when this comes up, um, the body of the person that's experienced the trauma, it just impulsively re reacts the way it always has. And so I've got a prop here to share with you a little bit of what that might look like. So somebody can just crumple down and hide, or they may cover up their face with a pillow, or they may smoosh their face into the pillow because Anytime somebody puts something right up to their face, especially here, this is the body then letting you know that they're, they're actually needing to get the blood to come back up to the prefrontal cortex so they can calm. So I don't know if you've ever seen the brain in the palm of the hand, but it's, it's fairly um, accurate size. This is the um, spinal column and this is the brain stem. And this thumb coming over is like the limbic system and there'd be two of them because we have right and left hemispheres and the fingers coming down over the top is the prefrontal cortex and the middle two fingers and the tips of them they touch anatomically all these different parts and that's the middle prefrontal cortex and we want to build a super highway between the middle prefrontal cortex and the alarm system the amygdala because this is reading your environment all the time. Am I safe? Do I matter? And when we recognize something in our environment from our past that when we didn't matter and we weren't safe, we flip our lid. So all of the 25 watts of electricity that we have in our system, it all is gone then to the amygdala. We lose our ability to stay present. So when somebody comes in and smushes their face into a hello, when I'm working with them, I am not going to make them wrong or shame them. I want to just like, oh, that's really soft. Hmm, I like that.
what's it feel like to you? I want to meet them right there, right where they are. Because I'm imagining it's a really young part that never was met that way. And that's so important. So I was inspired because I, it's important information that many people don't have access to. How important it is to stay relational. If something surprises you, take a breath and come into your body. Have a practice, have a little pillow, something that helps to bring soothing in. One of the things that I invite my clients to consider is to create a safe space, a special space that's just for them. It could be a comfy chair, it could be a, a lounge, it could be a swing, and to put things in it that really, that they enjoy and it brings beauty and comfort and soothing to them. And then to take time to go be in this place every day to nurture themselves because they really matter and their experience matters. So if you have any kind of resonance with this experience or know someone who has, I would encourage you to make a safe haven. Take time to notice what does your body like? Maybe you wanna have a little cup of tea there. Read some poetry, listen to some gentle music or meditate, pray. To take time to be with what is and be kind and gentle with yourself. And if you're needing any support, I invite you to reach out to me at healingyoursanctuary.com. I offer a free consultation, and there's also a free course that really explores some of these different skill sets that really are supportive for moving forward in our life and learning how to thrive. So thanks for being on this journey with me today. Healing you.